Well, hello there. So, Laserdisc. Uh, that seems to be what's in these days for some reason. Uh, people have started uh, talking about Laserdisc lately and all that stuff. And first of all, let's start. What is Laserdisc? Let, let's start with that. Um, well, Laserdisc is this, if I don't manage to not drop my other discs. Laserdisc is this. This is the first uh, optical, well commercial of course, uh, optical format ever released for video or otherwise. So... Really, I have nothing to say about the format that hasn't been said uh, already, so uh, if you already know what Laserdisc is, skip this part of the video, uh, or not, if you want to listen to it again. But Laserdiscs are a way of storing analog video uh, and digital or analog audio into an optical disc which is the size of an LP record uh, almost and well it's optical it's double sided as you can see and again the video is recorded in an analog way so uh, the pits and lens let's see if I can get my camera to focus on the disc which it doesn't seem to be able to, but okay. Uh, the pits and lands in these are not, uh, do not represent binary uh, encoding. They actually represent a pulse width modulated signal that gets converted into composite video. So yes, this, these things contain composite video. So that's the video part. They contain composite video in either NTSC or PAL. I think SICAM players uh, from France just generate the uh, SICAM color by themselves, and the laser discs are actually PAL. Uh, so uh, the audio part is encoded with the video. And it's PCM audio at 44.1 kilohertz, and it's 16-bit, just like a like a CD. It's in fact exactly the same signal as a CD. Uh, that's in PAL Laserdisc. Either that or FM encoded uh, FM, as in the same in the same as VHS Hi-Fi or Beta Hi-Fi uh, FM encoded um, audio analog audio together with the video. Uh, that is for PAL laser discs, which are the ones that I have. My player is also PAL. Um, it's an absolute piece of crap, my player, but at least the picture looks good. So uh, NTSC laser discs uh, came with analog uh, soundtracks. Uh, they by the way, analog and both analog and digital soundtracks are stereo in a PAL laser disc, and analog soundtracks are stereo in NTSC discs. So, uh, NTSC laser discs can have uh, analog and digital uh, soundtracks at the same time, so that's four channels of sound. Uh, or they can have the digital soundtrack, and in one of the uh, one of the analog channels, they can have an AC3 encoded soundtrack, which is actually it uses some weird encoding, which uh, the players have an, an FM output, uh, an FM modulated output, described as RF. Uh, AC3, which has to be demodulated and converted into regular AC3 for a receiver. Uh, some higher-end players also had regular optical outputs, 
for the 44.1 kilohertz PCM uh, digital audio tracks and there also was uh, some other form of digital encoding on NTSC LaserDisc I think it was DTS don't quote me on that but uh, that stuff was able to do 5.1 channel yeah 5.1 channel uh, surround sound with I think at 284 or 248 kilobit a second uh, which is pretty good compared to DVD for example which does um, it does the same but it does it at 384 kilobit a second uh, so um, the video video quality so I had someone ask uh, what's the point of LaserDisc in 2018 and well I'd say it's just collecting and stuff but if you're gonna buy LaserDisc for the video quality don't buy yourself a Blu-ray player or yeah don't buy yourself a, a DVD player those look like crap on modern TVs but don't buy a LaserDisc player if you're just going for video quality so the thing about the video in these is well it's analog and <laughs> that means it's composite video and composite video doesn't look really good you know um, modern encoding formats have the chrominance and with that is the color information and the luminance uh, that is the brightness information for the picture encoded separately they don't have a one-to-one -one ratio in the encoding so there's not the same uh, color resolution as there is uh, luminance, as there is brightness resolution but the uh, thing about uh, laser discs is both signals are encoded together and the chrominance resolution is a lot lower so I am not sure how much it was I don't think it is like fixed uh, but I do know uh, regular laser discs like NTSC laser discs store around 480 uh, lines of TV resolution which is mm, lower to like 200 and 50 something or maybe 300 in most movies since they are uh, in widescreen letterboxed format and PAL laser discs I think they do have the full 625 lines of resolution that the PAL format uh, stipulates but only 576 lines are visible and then the resolution gets cut further to like 300 and something lines in widescreen movies so, uh, more disadvantages of the format. Laser rod. Let's talk about laser rod. Uh, people love complaining about laser rod uh, in laser discs. Thing is, it doesn't happen as often as people make it out to. Um, most people think, well, I'm not gonna buy a laser disc player because, well, all of my discs are going to rot away in a year or two. I must say I own like 40 laser discs of which they're mostly just infotainment stuff more on that later uh, and none of them not a single one of them uh, has laser rod uh, the oldest one I have I believe is from 1991 the newest being uh, I think it's this one I do believe it is this uh, edition of Videodrome uh, this one's from 1997 not the movie, the movie's from 1982, by the way, recommended um, but this uh, edition is from 1997 and it doesn't have any <laughs> any laser rod at all so, uh, let's see, what else? players now, laserdisc players are 
funny things because well you see the sorry for the crudity of the video uh, I don't have a video editing setup uh, set up uh, yet so I have to make do but this is what a typical low-end uh, laser disc player looks as you can see it's a CLD 900S by Pioneer it has the laser disc logo right there <clears throat> And it has a CD tray, apart from the laser disc tray. So well, people usually, when they come to see a laser disc movie at my place, which doesn't happen really often, but it's happened a few times, um, they see the player and well, it's nothing special. You turn it on, it just says no disc, like a regular DVD player or anything like that. Uh, thing is, uh, doesn't the remote have a okay? So, I first, for people who have only seen it, like, once, what I do is the following. I uh, show them the CD tray, and well, okay, alright, it's a CD tray, right? But then, <laughs> um, there's the laser disc tray, and this is what surprises most people. So first Laserdisc uh, players were top loaders, so they would load, you would lift a little door here and you would place the disc, not unlike you did in, I don't know, CD boomboxes for example, with CDs, or, well, kind of, sort of like the first VCRs, where you put uh, your tapes in and then you close the lid then they moved on to these tray loaders and here's the thing about tray loaders uh, the trays are absolutely huge so for comparison this is the size of a CD this is the size this is the size of an 8 inch laser disc and this is the size of a regular laser disc just one of these of course I've already showed you and look at that that is one big hunk of video. I'll just read it and make out that it's an LD. This is not the, uh, the laser disc I want to show you. Uh, but yeah, about this player in particular, uh, I was asked if these were noisy. They're not. Uh, the later. Uh, laser disc players such as this one which is from 1995 I do believe they are very quiet uh, they're barely noticeable they make maybe a little more uh, noise than DVD players but just a little bit uh, I wouldn't say they make that much noise uh, so again this is a really really basic player it doesn't even have stills so it doesn't even have uh, still pause and that is even on CAV disk. So that's there's two encodings for uh, laser discs. One of them is CLV, constant linear velocity, which actually, uh, well, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's the rotational speed of the disk uh, changes along the uh, the video track. So when the laser is inside uh, the the disc, because laser discs, contrary to LPs or LPs actually, or well, singles also start, but uh, contrary to uh, traditional uh, non optical formats, start at the center of the disc. So when the disc is at the beginning, where, where, when the laser is looking at the beginning of the disc, uh, the disc actually spins faster and it slows down uh, as the... I think it... maybe it is the other way around, but it changes velocity uh, uh, well, as the laser goes out to the end of the disc uh, there's, then there's CAV, which is uh, constant angular velocity, which means well, the disc spins at a fixed rate uh, the thing about uh, CAV discs, which is really cool, is they store one frame of video per, per resolution sorry, per revolution um, and the cool 
the coolest thing about that is, well, since it is one per revolution, you can actually see uh, the video in the disc, and you can actually see the marks and all that. So here is the side two of Videodrome, and I don't know if I can get my camera to focus on the disc itself, kinda. Uh, nope, I can't. Well, beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Look it up on the internet. You have the internet. Uh, think about CAV discs. I cannot get the camera to focus. Oh, there we go. You can see this here, which is the beginning of one, one of the fields of the picture. So there's uh, four of those marks for those straight lines in one of these uh, CAV discs. Let me zoom out a little bit. Right there. And you can see my balding head. Beautiful. Uh, so... Oh, this is a nightmare. So, the thing about these is you can see the start of each field. So, you have the... you have the vertical sync pulse right here and then you have the color burst which is what contains the color information the color face information sorry for the picture for the uh, video source to well sorry for the video um, display that you have to decode the uh, video uh, the color on the composite signal so, I don't know, let's, I'll, I think I'll show you a bit of a, of a picture quality comparison. I, th I think I was talking about the player. We'll, we'll talk about all the things that it does not do um, while we're playing. Uh, so, this player is a piece of crap, as I've already stated. And I don't have a remote for this TV, so I'll have to turn it on manually. I am sorry for the crudity of just recording a screen, uh, but I do not have any capture devices that would uh, do justice to the LaserDisc format. Uh, so thing about CAV discs, while I'm inserting the disc into this, CAV discs or sides actually allow you to do a still frame of the of the picture. So you can actually pause the you can actually pause the picture into well a still frame. And it looks pretty good, actually. Uh, I've seen it on another player. And also allows you to do um, slow motion and all that stuff, and advance frame by frame, things like that. Uh, this player doesn't do any of that, even on CAV discs, for some reason. It should be able to, but it doesn't. I don't know why, it just shows this blue screen. So, I don't know, let's play this. And let's go to the... Uh, let's skip a chapter. So yeah, side A, as you can see. I am stretching the picture because uh, this is 4x3 laser disc. Uh, but the... yeah, whatever. The... Mm, uh, oh, that's too loud. Whoopsies. Uh, so you can see sort of the quality that you get in a laser disc. Uh, looks very good, honestly, but uh, this player uh, skipping, you can actually skip uh, chapters in laser discs, and I think I'm gonna remove this disc because this is a, a very uh, graphic movie and I didn't think this through, and maybe if I land on uh, something that isn't appropriate for YouTube, I might get taken, get my video taken down. So, yeah, well, I don't even know. I I started going into so many tangents. I don't even remember where, what I started talking about. But yeah, 
Well, laser disc. They're cool. Yeah. So yeah, I honestly don't know. I was gonna talk about the features or the lack of features of this player. So one of the features that it lacks is the CAV. Um, stills and all that stuff. It also lacks double-sided play. It only plays PAL discs. Uh, it doesn't have a digital output. It doesn't have an AC3 output, though it can be modded to have an AC3 output. And I do believe a PCM digital output too, but I'll have to look into the schematics for it. I know there's a model, there, there's a version of this, uh, which I do remember it was the CLD925, which is actually multi-standard, so that one actually plays uh, PAL and NTSC discs, and I think there's one board that handles the conversion, and if I can get that board, and just that board, for my player, I might be able to swap it out and play NTSC discs. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't have any kind of literally anything. It just has a SCART output in the back and a composite video output in the back. That's all it has. The uh, quote-unquote jog shuttle in the front is just just does half turns, so it doesn't turn all the way, and it's not analog. It just goes backwards and forwards. Uh, there's lot of, lots of stuff uh, that it doesn't have. So yeah, it's pretty much a bare bones uh, player. At least it does support CAV discs, which I do believe the predecessor to this player, which was the 700S, the CLD700S, I believe that one didn't even play CAV discs. Which is pretty stupid, because well, it's part of the spec. Uh, I do have one of those. But it's completely dead. The power supply is absolutely shot on it. So, yeah. Uh, let's talk about how you should hook up one of these to your HDTV. Don't. That's it, no. Uh, just kidding. So, if you want to watch laser discs on a high resolution TV, high definition, such as this one, which I didn't do it properly because well, I just wanted to show you the worst case scenario. Um, if you really do want um, to plug it into a high definition TV, use a scaler. Uh, there's a video about uh, Laserdisc, which is very, uh, very popular, uh, made by Techmoan, which says don't use a scaler. Use a scaler, please. Uh, the thing about most uh, modern HD TVs is they have absolutely, absolutely crap comb filters. The comb filter is what actually de determines uh, where to extract the color information and the, lumina and the luminance information from the composite video signal. Um, most modern TVs have absolutely crap. Um, uh, composite uh, comb filters, which means you will get a lot of ringing artifacts, which means uh, in edges, for example, like the uh, the area around people's faces, for example, you will get bright lines. Um, you will get uh, video on laser disc. If you turn the contrast up, tends to be very very grainy. Uh, you will get a lot more grain. Uh, with a proper scaler you won't see absolutely any grain at all. In one of these TVs you'll probably see lots of grain and I do believe that is down to the fact of the... well that the composite video is stored as a PWM signal. But yeah. Uh, well, in short, get a scaler. Uh, I'm using a cheap uh, not here, of course, it's in my main setup, and I'm using a cheap 
uh, Cypress, I do believe. Well, just, it's not so cheap. I got it brand new without the, the AC adapter for some reason. It didn't have the AC adapter, so I got it for, I think, 30, 30 pounds um, on eBay. It's a Cypress CM1391, I think it was. Uh, it basically takes either composite or S-video and outputs uh, DVI or HDMI. Or it actually outputs VGA, which is pretty cool too, if I ever want to use the thing on a proper CRT. Uh, but, yeah, if you're going to watch LaserDisc, use a scaler, because those tend to have uh, a lot better uh, comb filters. Or use a CRT, and that's it. Use use a big-ass CRT. I just, I would love to have a big-ass uh, CRT. TV, uh, but I just don't have the space. I simply don't. So I have to make do with the scaler. Still doesn't look bad at all. I have actually watched uh, a couple of movies on my 47. Well, it's my family's. Uh, it's in my house. Uh, my, on a 47 inch uh, 1080p set, and they look very good actually the they don't look as good as a blu-ray of course maybe they look like a dvd a bit worse like the edges are a bit more well a bit less defined but it doesn't have uh compression artifacts on black areas which is something that has put me off dvds pretty much since they came out or since i have been able to use them which is since they came out but yeah, uh, I don't know, let's, I, I honestly, I'm dragging this video for longer than I should, but it seems like my public, that's you, uh, like this, for some reason, they like me rambling on about stuff. That's Alien, right there, just a more, I don't know, tolerable uh, movie to play on YouTube. Well, I'll show you some, uh, I'll show you some parts of it. So the audio on LaserDiscs is awesome, and that is just the stereo track in them. I'm talking about the stereo, and that's it. Yeah, well, okay, there goes a content match. Uh, this is a very dark movie, so it won't really work in a crappy TN LCD panel. But look at that. Just look at that. You wouldn't say this is a movie that was well re-recorded in 1995. The movie is from 1978. I think, maybe 1979? Uh, 1979. But, yeah, look at that. that. That looks awesome, doesn't it? Like, it, it has nothing to do with the video quality of a tape. Uh, VHS tapes look like absolute crap compared to this. Like, absolute crap. Just look at this. Let's scan around. Just so, you know, we don't get content ID matches and stuff. Yeah, they look like this are pretty good. It's weird to see all of these actors being so young. <laughs> but, well, yeah. Honestly, like, picture on this thing looks amazing. And this is a crappy player. Well... Yeah, stop that. So, bottom line, if you know what you're in for, uh, and you like big ass covers, just look at this. Look at the sleeves, they're awesome. Uh, for your movies, buy a laser disc player, and buy laser discs. As for now, laser discs are quite cheap. Uh, 
at least uh, laser, uh, sorry, PAL laser discs are. Uh, but if uh, you want picture quality, don't buy them for that. Uh, it's they're pretty much just collector's items. Uh, thing is, they're getting kind of popular <laughs> lately, so I expect them to get uh, more expensive with time. So go grab yourselves uh, your movies and laser disc now because. I mean, this video probably won't even get a hundred views. So yeah, but there's a lot of videos on YouTube. By the way, watch the video by Technology Connections on uh, Laserdisc. Please do. Uh, he explains it. He's made one. I think it's a series of two episodes, maybe three. And he explains them beautifully, like beautifully. That I I love that guy. Um, I love the videos he puts out. So, yeah, that's about it. Let's just make a nice slow zoom in to show you the well is a laser display player. And that's that.